Hi, I'm Dr. Nathan Mollick, uh, professor here at Stetson University in the Digital Arts Program, and I'm doing this video to provide a quick start introduction to our Zoom audio recorders, which look like this. Uh, we have a new model uh, at the time of this recording. Uh, we just recently updated to the Zoom H4 Essentials model, um, which it simplifies some of the features of the Zoom uh, recorders, uh, but it also changes the workflow just a little bit. So I'm doing this uh, mainly as an introduction to students who are new to um, audio recording with these uh, Zooms, but I also mention a few of the changes that have occurred for those that may have used uh, some of our previous models, uh, checking them out from the library. So the basic concept is is that it records uh, audio to an SD card, much like your uh, digital camera would record uh, photographs to an SD card. It looks something like this, okay? Um, they're quite small, uh, and you can hold, uh, the ones that we have for these Zoom recorders actually hold uh, 256 gigabytes. So there's plenty of room for recording uh, stereo sound files and uh, capturing things uh, that way. Uh, to get started, you want to power on the unit, uh, and you'll do that by finding the on-off switch here on the side panel. Uh, you can simply take this switch and... Um, pull it toward the uh, power icon and the screen will light up like that to let you know that it's powering on. Uh, when it first powers on, you'll actually see um, some of the newer features. One, uh, the new display actually has a, a live uh, waveform that it draws for you so you can actually uh, see how it's recording over the last few seconds. It's a much faster startup time than our previous recorders, uh, previous versions of the Zoom recorders. Um, and a couple things that you can notice uh, to let you know that it's it's not recording yet. Uh, even though the waveform is being drawn here, the waveform is in white. That's one signal that you have that's not recording. Uh, there's also numbers here counting time, zero, and currently it's just a bunch of zeros. The fact that it's um, staying still at those uh, those zeros uh, means that it, and not counting up means that it's not recording at this at this time. Uh, and there's also a light just above the record button here, uh, and it's not on. That also tells you that it's not recording. So those are some things that you can um, look at. Um, <clears throat> To, to confirm that it's not actually recording at, at, the, at the moment that you turn it on. Um, when you are uh, setting up and getting ready to record, you want to make sure that you've got um, the input level set correctly. Um, and what's different about this model from previous models is that uh, it does not have a recording level setting. So you don't need to set the recording level. You don't need to check to make sure that it's clipping if you're used to that operation. Uh, you can just simply hit record and go, okay? Uh, there is a volume uh, control on the side here, and you'll see that it says volume on it. This is simply the volume for your headphone level only, though. It will not control the level of the recording. The recording level stays consistent uh, throughout, okay? Um, you can uh, set the input uh, for the microphone here, uh, and you see how there's a light just above where it says uh, mic, okay? Uh, if I turn that off, you'll notice that the waveform goes away. That tells me that it's actually not going to be recording from the internal microphones here on the top, okay? Uh, so a good thing to keep that lit up and keep that waveform drawing, okay? Uh, you also do have two XLR inputs on the bottom that can be used for external microphones. Um, you would enable those by using the one and the two, and you'll see that those light up as well as start a waveform uh, being drawn on the screen as well. So uh, if you're not interested in using those, just simply keep the middle uh, mic light on and that will record with the uh, internal microphones and you'll see the waveform being drawn just in the windows one and two to, to signify the left and right channels at the top of with the internal microphones, okay? To start recording, uh, you just simply press this big button in the center of the interface. It's got a red uh, button, but it's the large, it's got a red circle on it, excuse me. And it certainly is the largest button on the interface though. So when you press this, you'll notice that the light turns on to let you know that it started recording. Uh, in addition, the uh, waveform turns red. That lets you. That's another signal that you have that it's actually recording sound at that time. Uh, and then the numbers will start counting up um, just after it flashes a, a file name uh, there for you. And the file names on this are actually uh, based on date instead of being counted in order like our previous uh, Zoom recorders were. So, uh, so once you see the red light here, the red waveform here, and the red numbers counting up there, you know that recording is actually going on. Okay. 
Uh, and so a few tips uh, for getting uh, the best sound out of these recorders. Uh, one, you want to take these microphones, you want to point them toward your source. Uh, make sure that they're pointed toward the, the thing that you're actually interested in uh, recording. And so the mic orientation is important, okay? Um, it's going to give you a left and a right signal there and capture a stereo uh, recording of what it is, uh, whatever it is that you're uh, pointed at. Uh, so uh, if you're recording someone with speech, uh, uh, I find that uh, a good uh, good distance is about a foot away from their mouth uh, to get a good clean signal from their uh, talking if they're talking at a normal conversational level. You might need to experiment with some other uh, distances if you're uh, recording louder sources. <clears throat> um, we also, in our kits, have a windscreen. It looks like this, okay? Um, this looks kind of funny, uh, funny-looking haircut, uh, but if you place this over the microphones... Uh, it will still pick up sound through this cover, but it just simply prevents the wind from buffeting up against the microphone diaphragms and interfering with the sound uh, and <clears throat> giving you a cleaner signal. But it's still good to, to point at the actual uh, subject that you're trying to record. The other uh, th piece of advice that I'll give is that uh, handling noise. So when you actually move your fingers around on this recorder, although it's a lot more sturdy, this recorder, than the previous iterations of the, the Zoom recorder, um, but moving your fingertips around and kind of shuffling your hand like this, this is all. This will all be picked up uh, via the microphones as handling noise, and you want to avoid that if at all possible. So try to keep your hand still. Try to keep a firm grip on it while you're recording, and uh, simply uh, point it at the subject that you're trying to record. Okay. Um, it is also let's see it, it let's see it does a better job of recording a little bit louder sources than it does uh, quieter sources. Although uh, with the new 32-bit recording, you can easily recover quieter sources and boost the level a little bit, uh, uh, boost the level quite a bit actually, in order to uh, capture and hear those uh, sounds uh, that you captured. Okay, when you're ready to stop recording, uh, you just simply hit the stop button, which is just to the uh, left of the record button, okay? You press that and you'll notice the light goes out, a little uh, update uh, spins uh, on the interface and the waveform goes white again. Uh, those are ways to tell that you've actually stopped recording at that point. Um, you can play back the file that you immediately recorded with the play button, which is just to the right of the stop button, okay? Uh, and you hit so that and it'll actually start, recording. it'll start playing uh, out of the addition, internal speaker. You can always hit uh, stop as well. Um, and then there is a file list to see uh, uh, files that have been recorded on this. Um, you get to that by using this toggle wheel on the side. It's a blue toggle wheel on the uh, right-hand side of the recorder. And then there's an enter button just below that. If you take the toggle wheel and you'll notice that the, the menu on the bottom uh, changes selection. When you hit file list, go ahead and hit the enter key and it'll bring up a list for you of all the files that have been recorded uh, that are currently saved on the SD card that you can uh, use to uh, uh, pick something and play back and make sure that you, the thing you've uh, captured. And this is actually a good view to show you the new file naming structure actually uses uh, a date and time format. So these numbers uh, are not random. It's a matter of uh, the year, the month, the day, and then the time. Uh, in this uh, number scheme, which makes it a lot easier for you to uh, go back and uh, correlate that with any slating details or any times that you've recorded and actually know when it is that you picked up that recording, okay? Uh, I'm going to toggle back out of this menu. So I just uh, toggle up to the back button. I hit enter and it'll go back to the main screen where it's drawing the the uh, waveform as well. Uh, in addition, these menus are helpful for getting things off of the card as well. So if you are uh, in our lab on one of our computers or if you're on your own computer and you need to connect this and offload sound files, you want to scroll over to the USB option and hit enter. And you're going to see there's an option that says file transfer. Uh, if you click enter on that and click PC Mac, it will put the recorder in a mode where it actually can be connected via USB cable to your computer. Uh, in our kit, we've included a USB cable um, that has one end for USB-C that we, you would connect to the actual recorder itself. The other end uh, has a little uh, switch, or I guess a little uh, cap on it here, uh, where it's USB-C without the cap. Uh, and then if you place the cap on it, it'll be 
be A uh, for your older computers and make sure you have the ability to connect those, okay? Uh, and uh, again, put it in that file transfer mode, connect it with the USB cable. It should show up just like an external hard drive and you can copy uh, files off of there for projects that you might be working on. And when you're done, do turn off the recorder just to save batteries. It's the same switch that you used on the right-hand side to turn on the recorder. Just slide it toward the power icon and you'll see a goodbye message before the unit turns itself off completely. Uh, but that's my quick start introduction to the new Zoom H4 Essentials that we have for checkout in the library here at Stetson. Uh, hopefully that gets you started and gets you rolling with going out and doing some field recording with these awesome new recorders.